friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day five in my 2017 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be using this set from Lawn Fawn called Snow Cool. I stamped out my images on some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and then I sprinkled some clear embossing powder over those and heat set it as I wanted to color these in with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers today. I'm starting out with number 010 black and I'm just sticking really close to the edges since this is a very intense color and drawing in my darkest shadows. And then I'm going to go in with number 095 dark gray and just pull that darker color out a bit and extend it towards the middle of his body. And then I'm going to take my number two round silver black velvet brush and dip it in some water. And then I can begin to move that color around on the paper and just watercolor using those pigments that I've laid down. I like these brushes because they come to a very fine tip and that way I'm able to do a lot of this little detail work. It also helps that I embossed the images so that clear embossing makes kind of a little well um, where I've put the color down and it keeps the water contained so it doesn't go out of the lines. I colored the second penguin exactly the same and now I'm moving on to the little top hat using those same two shades to just come in from either side, leaving a highlight down the center so that it looks nice and round. For the penguin's nose and feet and the snowman's carrot nose, I'm using number 070 orange. And I put the shading in the opposite direction to where they're facing. And then again, just pulling that color out with my paintbrush and a little bit of water. And I forgot to paint in that little penguin's wing earlier, so I'll just take care of that now. For the snowman, or snow penguin I should say, I'm using number 036 light blue. And I'm just adding a little bit of a frosty glow to mainly the left side of him. And then just a little bit on the right so that he looks nice and round as well. And since the igloo is made out of the same snow, I use the same exact color, just shading heavily on the left and then drawing that color over towards the right. Now that the black has dried, I can go back over to the whites of my penguins and add some shading with 091 light gray. And again, I just put this down at the very edge and then drew that out a bit and let it fade off into white so they didn't get too dark. For the earmuffs on the first penguin, I'm using number 082 purple. And see how I'm able to get into that fine little line with the headband with these markers. The tips are just that detailed. Um, I just love them. They're great. And also with the paintbrush, I can stay in the lines really well because they have that super fine tip. The hat on the second penguin is number 042, turquoise green. And I'm just coloring it as if it was like a beanie, or just all one solid color. The hat band on the top hat is going to be number 030 blue. And finally, I will give the penguins some rosy cheeks using number 026 light pink. I'll set them aside to dry for a little bit and then cut them out with the coordinating dies. In the meantime, I wanted to create an Aurora Borealis background, so I've grabbed a couple of colors of Distress Ink. I've got Picked Raspberry, Wilted Violet, Twisted Citron, and Squeezed Lemonade. And beginning with the squeeze lemonade, I'm going to really dip my blending foam into that ink and brush on the color really dark and heavy. I don't care if it's splotchy because I'm going to be doing a lot of blending and then adding colors over top. I just want there to be a lot of color. Next, I'm going in with the Twisted Citron and again, just loading that up and bringing in that color. This time from the right side, I want the yellow and the green to be kind of on the bottom um, side by side. I was looking up pictures of the Northern Lights and um, I saw one that really appealed to me and it kind of had these kind of stacked layers of color that I thought was really cool. 
So that's the effect I'm trying to go for here. I went back to the squeeze lemonade to just blend those two colors together and next I'm taking the picked raspberries and I'm going to layer that over top of the squeeze lemonade um, because these two colors together are going to blend and make a nice kind of peachy coral color so I'm just going to add a whole lot of it and then once again go back with that squeeze lemonade. So it is a lot of layering to get the colors to blend, but I think the end result is really cool and definitely worth the extra effort. So I realized I was going to need a transition shade between the green and the purple, otherwise I was gonna get brown. So I grabbed some peacock feathers because the blue and the green together are gonna to make a really nice emerald green, and then the blue and the purple together are gonna to make a nice indigo. So now I can take that wilted violet and just go all the way across the whole rest of the background because the purple is also going to blend really nicely with the picked raspberry. And I am going to take that wilted violet down the sides just a little bit as well, kind of creating a dark halo or ring all around the northern lights so that they're kind of spotlighted. To intensify that sky, I'm going to take chipped sapphire and black soot. And here is where you're really going to see my vision for this card start to come together. Um, once you have that darkness around, it really makes those bright colors in the center pop. And this was filmed at night under my bright lights, so the colors are actually a lot more intense than they even look on camera, and you'll be able to see that in the photo at the end of the video. So I'm just going back to the chip sapphire and blending that black soot a little bit more into the background. And then I'm going to take some Copic Opaque White and just add a bit to an acrylic block. Just make sure I get a good amount on there. It has a super fine, tiny little brush there. And then I'm going to take a little spritz of water from my Dispress Sprayer because I wanted to dilute it a bit. And then I'm going to take an old paintbrush and just flick it off the side of the acrylic block until I get a nice splattered effect. And I'm going to keep moving it around until I get kind of larger droplets and some smaller ones. And I want it to mostly be concentrated on the darkest portions of my sky. A little bit less on the actual colors in the center. I die cut that with the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Rectangles. And I also die cut two snow banks using the Stitch Hillside Border Dies. I'm going to take one of those and pop that in my Misty so that I can add my sentiment. And I'm going to take that from the Lawn Fawn Snowy Backdrops stamp set. And I'm going to ink up the Let It Snow sentiment using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And that stamped perfectly the first time, so I'll just pop that out. But to get it to match with my penguins and my images, I'm going to just coat that in some clear embossing powder and then heat set that with my heat tool. I've added some foam tape to the back of that strip and I'm just going to set it lightly in place as kind of a place marker. I don't want to press it down too far yet um, because I want to take this back hill and add a bit of Tombow Mono Multi Glue and then just tuck it behind. That way I know I have perfect placement and I get the stitching lines all matched up on the edges. I did get a smear of glue over on the right there, but it actually was exactly where I was going to be putting one of my penguins, so it really didn't matter. And actually I thought it was funny because that glue smear was sort of in the shape of a penguin. I added him over on the right with some foam tape and just left his little feet without any foam so that he's actually perfectly level with the front snowdrift, so that'll make it nice and easy for mailing. And then the snowman or snow penguin I added to the back snow drift, just flat to the card with some more Tombow Mono and popped his little top hat on his head. And the other penguin got some foam tape as well. And then the igloo will get glued flat to the card back on that hill so it'll look like it's kind of off in the distance. My card base is made from Lawn Fawn black licorice cardstock, just scored and folded to a standard four and a quarter by five and a half card, and this is a landscape orientation. 
and I'm just going to glue my focal panel to the card base with some more liquid glue. Make sure that's pressed into place. Since my card base is black, I'm going to need to either write my message on the inside with a white gel pen, which can sometimes get smeared since I'm left-handed, or just insert a liner, which is what I'm actually going to do. So I'm stamping another sentiment and the penguin from the Winter Penguin little mini set, as he looks very similar. He just will be a little bit different from the ones on the outside, but he kind of really goes well with them. And I'm stamping that in some Lawn Fawn Fresh Lavender ink. So I just have the Peace and Joy and then the little skating penguin with the snowflakes and the little skate heart behind him. And then I'll just glue that down to the inside of the card. To finish things off, I've taken some iridescent crystals from Studio Katia, and I've just placed them down on my card where I want them to go. And I'm going to use my pick-me-up tool to just lift those up and then add some Ranger Multimedia Matte just right underneath. And that will dry perfectly clear and you won't be able to tell that it's there at all. It won't like fog up the crystals at all or anything. And because they have this iridescent quality, these crystals really bring out the colors in our Aurora Borealis background. I thought they were just the perfect accent. And there's a ton of different sizes in that little bag. I thought that was really cool. Um, there's at least four or five different sizes, so all kinds of little options there for a little bit of glitz and glimmer. That is going to complete our card for today. I'm going to lift it up to the light so you can see all that pretty shimmer on those crystals and give you one last peek at the inside of the finished card. I hope you guys enjoyed the techniques that we covered today with the Aurora Borealis background and the watercoloring with the zigs. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and you can also leave me a comment. I love reading what you guys have to say. Here's an extra couple videos from the previous two years of day five of the holiday card series. So hopefully that'll tide you over until the next one. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.